Now to a major story about the improper use of public funds and how one of Australia's most resilient politicians is spinning a damning corruption inquiry report into merely being an educational experience. Victoria's Anti-Corruption Commission found evidence of misconduct and improper influence against the Andrews government for awarding $1.2 million to the Labor-affiliated Health Workers Union without any competitive tender process. But in the Premier's eyes, this report was just an opportunity to grow. There are no findings against anyone in this uh, report. It does provide an opportunity for an educational report under their education functions. Well, I'm always accountable for everything that happens in the government. And what the Odd Ibex asking us to do is to uh, look at the 17 recommendations, and that's exactly what we'll do. Simple. So which was it? A disgraceful act of misconduct, an improper influence, or a learning exercise? The Australian's Victoria editor, Damon Johnston, was not falling for the spin. These are quite serious, very serious findings by the corruption watchdog. I mean, damning findings, but Daniel Andrews just seemed to shrug them off today. It was Dan at his audacious best. Um, he dismissed this 130-page document as an educational report, essentially. But when you even just turn to page two, and I'll just quote a little bit from page two because it's quite important, it talks in terms of evidence of misconduct, improper influence, interference, obstruction, breaches of duties and obligations by both ministers, staff and public servants. Now, this is regarding a $1.2 million contract, so it's a lot of money. Just so happened that contract went to a Labor-affiliated union around the 2018 election that the Labor government, the Andrews government, was very keen to keep on side. And the Australian's Rachel Baxendale appeared equally as puzzled by the Premier's performance. Her article, Andrews Puts I Back Through Spin Cycle, gives us insight to the views of reporters on the ground. It was all many journalists present could do not to burst out laughing. This was a bloke who had spent half an hour repeatedly describing what the Anti-Corruption Commission deemed evidence of misconduct and improper influence among his senior staff, ministers and public servants as an educational report that made no findings against anyone. And it was pleasing to see the Guardian Australia journalist, Benita Kolovis, have a little bit of a go at Andrews as well. For a leader who has weathered enough political controversies to earn the nickname Teflon Dan, it's not surprising that Daniel Andrews has attempted to downplay an anti-corruption watchdog report into his government's actions. Now, for her efforts sort of being critical on Daniel Andrews, the reporter was ridiculed on Twitter by the diehard Dan fans. It's no wonder some journalists are clearly influenced by the views permeating that platform. Christy, really keen to get your thoughts on this. Uh, it was an interesting performance by, by Daniel Andrews. Love him or hate him, he is really good at spinning a controversy. Look, it rivals those hour and a half long press conferences all of us Victorians sat through during COVID. Uh, luckily, this time, there were a couple of journalists, and you mentioned Rachel mm. Baxendale from The Australian, um, doing an incredible job, uh, and her coverage of this has been outstanding. Um, but even uh, permeating through the left media, people are starting to ask questions. Dan Andrews has been Premier for eight and a half years. We've seen this spin cycle on repeat consistently. Um, this is the most damning report that a Victorian taxpayer could possibly read. It is about a contract from DHHS, which is a major department in the Victorian Public Service, um, awarding a that contract to the Health Workers Union. Dan Andrews, of course, was the Health Minister for a very long time uh, prior to becoming Premier. Uh, he, of course, is from the Socialist Left Faction of Victoria, as is the Health Workers Union aligned to the Left Faction. This smacks of everything the IBAC report says is going on here. And to stand up and say it's just an educational document <laughs> and room for improvement is 
absolutely one of the most condescending things I've ever heard him say. And being Victorian, locked in my apartment for several months, I've heard him say a lot of patronising things to the taxpayers of Victoria, Jack. Sophie, Christie's right, isn't it? It's, it's absolutely ludicrous, but it really surprised me to see The Guardian actually be critical of him and, and to see ABC reporters ask tough questions and from Rachel Baxendale's piece, it was quite clear that the reporters there were fairly unified in their raised eyebrows at this, this reaction. Well, Jack, I watched parts of that press conference and even ABC's Raph Epstein was having a crack at Daniel Andrews, which isn't mm. uh, the norm down here in Melbourne. But he is the master of spin. He can intimidate the media. He can gaslight the media. He can baffle the media. He can do it all so beautifully without a drip of sweat running down the side of his face. Love him or loathe him, he is a master of spin and he takes control. He runs those press conferences. He dictates how they, they work. But the biggest problem down here in Victoria, aside from a lot of the media batting for him, is the opposition because there's no opposition down here. They're absolutely pathetic. And as a result, people just move along. They see these reports and they move along. It doesn't have an impact. And that's why Dan continues to rule the roost so well down here and dominate like he did in the last election results last year. Yeah, Christy, I'm keen to get your thoughts on that because even if journalists start asking tougher questions, do you think it's going to be enough for that to break through to voters? Do you think it will start to change their perception? Because he is still, despite everything, all the controversies, still quite popular. Look, I think it's a combination of a couple of things. A lot of things that go on that can prove corruption and misuse of public funds in politics are really difficult for the average voter to understand. It's layer upon layer upon layer of contractual awardings to here and union influence here mm. and how people have misspent public funds in certain other committee ways. That's very, very difficult and only people who've worked in politics a long time or the media a long time understand the minutiae of that paper trail and what that means. So the opposition needs to improve digging that out and translating that into very simple messages because it is a complex web and you need to get it down to one message of what actually happened. The other issue is the Andrews government is famous in Australian politics for spending the most money uh, on media polling, on social media investment uh, and this absolute huge Twitter movement of the I Stand with Dan. They're very proud of this. All of their consultants have given several interviews about how successful it has been uh, and that's what being in government uh, for the last eight and a half years enables you to build and, of course, you can use public... Um, money by salaries uh, of paying all these media advisors to build that operation uh, and give it time to be really, really successful. So they've got a lot of assets at their disposal. It's a major problem all across Australia, these taxpayer-funded media armies to essentially do spin for, for these, you know, sitting politicians. It's something that people need to look at.